Ladies and gentlemen on the Shred Gaming Citadel video, let us discuss DirectX 12 on the Xbox One. So, quite a few viewers have asked me to do this. I am still partially sick, well actually still quite sick, but hopefully we can get through this without too much coughing or incidents. So of course the Xbox One um, was featured on its logo for the GDC uh, March uh, 20th. 2014 of course uh, unveiling of direct x 12 now there are a couple of things we definitely know about this and we're going to be also doing some deductions and suppositions pr pr primarily on reasonable assumptions so one thing that's definitely 100 percent clear is that we know that this is going to be part of microsoft's plan to start unifying and improving the development structure for multiple devices we know, of course, that the Xbox uh, 360, as well as the original Xbox, all used variants of DirectX. With the Xbox One, they have done numerous improvements over DirectX uh, for the sake of performance on consoles, and in their own words, they basically removed anything that was not Xbox One related. In other words, anything that wasn't helping Xbox One's performance or wasn't a function that was relevant, they removed it for memory overhead and just to make it a more streamlined API. So of course, there are several aspects in which DirectX 12 is going to help the Xbox One. The main aspect that it's definitely going to help, in my opinion, is marketing and PR. This is something that's very difficult to measure, but it also is the most obvious and doesn't require any confirmation on Microsoft's part. The very fact of the matter is, DirectX 12 being the latest and greatest on the PC, it's certainly not going to help them for the average Joe public to also say this is powered by exactly the same um, API that is being used on the latest PC games. And this would be regardless whether DirectX actually is a major benefit to the Xbox One. However, speaking of benefit, the primary focus of DirectX, and we can tell this just by the few short lines of description that they've given, is to get closer to the metal. In other words, to reduce the software layer and to make it easier to communicate directly to the GPU, the CPU, to give instructions to the system as a whole. This is very similar, of course, to Mantle. And in AMD's credit, I have a feeling that it would have taken longer for DirectX to Microsoft to probably stop pushing this if it wasn't for Mantle. I have a feeling that because of Mantle's support increasing, um, Microsoft didn't want to start losing that. They didn't want to start to become less relevant. And so they certainly took some of that on board. I'm not saying that they wouldn't have done it eventually. I am, however, saying that I feel that Mantle definitely helped support the case at Microsoft. Now, it is important to remember that the Xbox One is not using DirectX it's, uh, 11. It's using like 11.1 or 11.2. There is some debate but it is, however, fully supportive of timed resources. Now, this is quite important because it also raises another really major question. Let's ignore the performance benefit of coding to metal, right, to begin with. There's always, well, generally speaking, there's large features that are added on DirectX per version. For example, DirectX 11 supported tessellation with great support of tessellation. Uh, we also got better support of uh, ambient occlusion and other bits and pieces. This is certainly the case with Di DirectX 10, DirectX 9. There was, also, there was always certain features that were added. Now it's unknown right now if the Xbox One's GPU is going to be fully supportive in terms of hardware of all of these new new features. It's completely unknown. I wouldn't be surprised from the perspective of it just makes sense if we do see a greater emphasis as well on a GP, GPU computing. Microsoft are also keen to continue to point out the benefits of ray tracing, particularly on the cloud. The problem of course becomes, well, show us something. And I'm still somewhat reluctant to put too much stock and faith into cloud computing because 
when it comes to cloud rendering, there are definitely issues. That's not to say that it doesn't have some uses, but right now I'm still not 100% convinced. There are those, of course, that are very keen to point out the Xbox One no doubt has a hidden GPU inside of it. Personally, I don't believe that even for a second at this point. I tell you why, and this is pretty much several reasons. Firstly, Microsoft have denied it time and time again. Secondly, why would you release a console several months later be hiding the fact that it's got a significantly more powerful GPU to basically get absolutely reamed by the press, by a lot of gamers and so on as the significantly more inferior console to eventually release it. Now, when there were hints of this first, the, of the integrated GPU, I admit that I kind of thought to myself, it could have some uses. This is back before the system was actually released. And I had a feeling that it could have a very interesting perspective, maybe one GPU being used for compute, one GPU being used for the graphics. But this is clearly not going to be the case at this point with the system's configuration. It just doesn't really make sense. So my personal perspective is that's not really going to be the case. So I think it's WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get with the Xbox One. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I have a feeling the DirectX is going to be focused primarily to improve the development environment for the Xbox One, which is obviously a benefit to games developers. I also have a feeling that we're going to be seeing closer to the metal performance, which obviously, once again, is a large benefit to games developers. I also have a feeling that from the perspective of the PC marketplace, Microsoft really, really just wanted to hold on to it quite tightly. They're facing quite stiff competition from gaming right now from the PC. There are some in the gaming PC industry that just wants Windows to die, that just wants it to kind of fade away into the background, or for games developers to really start pushing Mantle or OpenGL. Now, to Microsoft's credit, and I've, I've mentioned several times before, sorry guys, I'm still a bit snuffly, that's why sometimes I'm kind of pronouncing words a bit weirdly, it's very difficult sometimes to kind of... <coughs> but anyway, um, as I mentioned before, with the Xbox, with way back in the day of DirectX, the speed of the releases of DirectX were pretty fast, and early DirectX, if you, if you had to use that rather than OpenGL or like Glide, you were really sad panda. You just didn't want to use it because DirectX just wasn't good. It, it You often lost you a lot of performance. DX9, 10, 11 certainly started to improve a lot of this and reduce the overhead, but still with multi-core rendering and so on, still not exactly well supported. Hopefully we're going to be getting much better performance out of this. And I wouldn't be surprised, and this is not being confirmed or anything like that, but I would not be surprised if it also benefits uh, CPU rendering a lot better as well, and otherwise have multiple CPU cores uh, telling the GPU what to do. Now that's not to say that some of this stuff isn't already supported, but it is to say that I have a feeling that they're going to try and make it uh, better performing. The real question for many people is just what type of performance boost we're going to be seeing or if we're going to be seeing any performance boost at all, or if it's going to be more of a features upgrade. Well, it's a bit difficult to know. Personally speaking, I'm really looking forward to GDC 2012, uh, 2012, uh, 2012, 2014, because I have a feeling we really are going to be seeing quite a lot of interesting technologies being released. From the PC perspective, the release of a new DirectX is even more exciting, because quite honestly speaking, a lot of people thought to themselves, well, what's going on? Are Microsoft basically abandoning the APIs for a while? And I tell you what's a bit weird. We don't really know yet what's going on in terms of the feature set. And here's one thing that's really not confusing, but very strange. If you look at the GPU scene, NVIDIA have released the Maxwell. Um, and as far as we know, there is no features which support DirectX 12 built in it. Although, to be fair, they could be there and they just haven't announced them. But, uh, most likely for NDA reasons, 
But let's assume it doesn't have support. This most likely means we're going to be having a scenario of one of two things. Either the difference between a DX11 and 12 isn't really hardware, but more how it's supported on the software there. Or, quite simply put, we're going to have the traditional, the API is released, and then we have to wait for AMD and NVIDIA to rush out their cards to support the standards. Both AMD and NVIDIA, of course, always do that. It's pretty standard practice. And then it's like who can best fully support the features of a graphics card fastest. For the Xbox One, however, just how much of a performance boost we're going to be getting is completely and utterly unknown. It's possible that this is all part of a larger overhaul of the Xbox One's performance. In other words, it's going to be kind of an incremental upgrade and Microsoft are, you know, expecting like a 5-10% performance increase. Obviously, I'm just throwing numbers out there. Don't take this as gospel. On the other hand, it could also be much part of a larger strategy of Microsoft to start to unify a lot of their um, development environment. So once again, just a quick overview of all my thoughts and opinions. It's unknown just how much the Xbox One hardware supports DirectX 12, but it is a great move for Microsoft to include DX12 on the Xbox One. And it really, to be honest with you, was the only decision they could do. Because, let's just be honest, you can't release DirectX 12 just a couple of months after the Xbox One is released, but not support DX12 on the Xbox One. It would be a commercial disaster. It would be a PR disaster. But at the same time, they can't just leave 11.2 out there because a lot of games developers just aren't happy with it at the moment. And we know, of course, Steam are pushing their Steam OS. Uh, AMD, of course, they're pushing Mantle. You've got various uh, studios right now that are really liking the look of um, OpenGL. OpenGL 4.3, 4.4, and so on are really becoming you know, low-level um, optimizations there. And don't forget, tiled resources or equivalent can also be done on OpenGL as well. The real question is, how can the DX12, in terms of low-level performance and optimizations and feature set, compare to the PlayStation 4 and its own PSSL or PlayStation Shader Language? which by the way I have covered videos and information on if you want to check those out but I don't think we're going to be seeing a situation where the Xbox One's shading power disadvantage compared to the PS4 is suddenly going to disappear or anything like that but I have a feeling that this is going to be more about solidifying Microsoft's basis and maybe improving support for various functions and so on but I'm curious to see exactly what this means specifically for the PC desktop and how those features are going to translate to the Xbox One. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.